Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this video. My name is Pascal Difo. Uh, some of you or most of you who follow my channel already know me. Um, so I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to, uh, you know, to, 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 to make or to, you know, um, to do this long overdue video. Um, you know, everything just fell on us like uh, one time without any preparation, you know, and we just had to cope with it. So what I'm talking about is, um, you know, cryptocurrencies, the blockchain, tokens, DeFi, all those new technologies that nobody saw coming, at least not the majority of the people. Those who were following those kind of uh, technologies and you know where they were going kind of had a clue. But for most people, including myself, I had no clue. You know, it just, you know, I had heard about things, but for me it was like, yeah, nah. Uh, you know, I didn't want to do anything with it or have to do anything with it. But then at one point I had no choice but to have to deal with it. And yet I didn't have all the background information that was required in order to have a good understanding of what was going on. And it is taking over the entire place. Now, it is important because you see more and more projects, product, things coming your way, which are based on the blockchain. And that's why I'm saying this video is long overdue. I should have done it long time ago. So it is important. So I'll try to make it as simple as possible using, you know, simplistic terms and words to help you understand. I don't want to make a video that will get you to go back to, you know, get the dictionary or go on Google to find out, okay, what was he trying to say? I'll keep it as simple as possible using words and terms that you already know. Uh, you know, that I would borrow from, from, from our data, from our regular, you know, every day, because the blockchain is not creating a new world. It is just giving us, it is just giving us tools using technology to do the same thing that we're already doing. So without further ado, I will go ahead and, um, you know, start a presentation. So let me open it first. Um, okay, where is it now? So just bear with me, I have to find it first. Where did I save it? My files. Okay, okay, found it. So the, uh, the presentation is really not long. Uh, I kept it to uh, I kept it to maybe three or four pages, four slides, and um, you know. And again, I, I don't want to overwhelm you with information that you don't need. I'm not going to give you a, I'm not going to give you a scientific level uh, information that really will confuse you more than anything else. No, that's not what I want to do. I want to keep it so simple that when you um, you know, when you read it, I want to keep it so simple that when you when you listen to this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because uh, you know, I, there, there's a lot of video out there, and those who would like after this video to to uh, to go a little bit deeper in in this, you know, on this topic, feel free to do so. I actually encourage you to do so. And if you feel like there's something important that I missed, feel free to share it with me as well. All right, so let me start the presentation. Okay, so blockchain, tokenization, and DeFi. So what is the blockchain? To keep it simple, the blockchain is a technology that encrypts data exchange between two parties without the middleman. Now, I know. The blockchain is actually not the encryption. The technology is really the encryption, the cryptography. The cryptography is what is used to encrypt the data exchange between two parties. 
it could be any kind of data. It could be financial data. It could be, you know, my voting information. It could be all kind of information that are exchanged between two parties without a middleman. You know, sometimes when you have a middleman, middleman could cheat. In the, on the, on, uh, with encryption and the blockchain, you cannot cheat. Now, what makes the blockchain so unique is that the data are immutable. Immutable means you cannot change it. You cannot change it because every single block that is created contains the DNA of all the previous blocks ever created. Let me say it again. As we speak, there is a block that is being mined or forged. That block that is being mined or forged contains the, the DNA of all the other blocks that have ever been created. Powerful, right? So you can still cheat, by the way. But in order to cheat, you will need to go back to every single block ever created and change everything in there so that it matches. So pretty hard to achieve, right? So yeah, that's, that's what makes the blockchain so unique. And the blockchain technology can be applied to many different industries as it recreates the trust without having to rely on a third party. You know, you cannot, you know, I'm, I'm not saying all third parties, you know, in a transaction are bad or, you know, bad people. But at the same time, we all know that not everybody is okay, not everybody's honest. So the best way to bring back the trust is to remove the middleman and rely on a code. The code does what is written in it. Everybody abides by the code. The code has no feeling. The code has no friends. The code just does what is in the code. So the immutability of the blockchain is that what allowed Satoshi Nakamoto to create the first viable cryptocurrency in 2009, the Bitcoin. Yes, and you see how I said the viable cryptocurrency. Because prior to Satoshi Nakamoto who created the first Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency, viable cryptocurrencies, there were already cryptocurrencies. They just were not viable. And the reason they were not viable is one thing. You could potentially copy one, 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 one crypto or one, one, one um, you know, cryptocurrency and use it over and over and over again. A little bit like if you take your, your, your $100 bill and then you go to the photocopier and you know, make a thousand of that particular one with the same number and go around using it or giving it to your friends so that they could use it and nobody would know. So that was known as the double spending problem. So what Satoshi Nakamoto did is he wrote exactly how he think the double spending could be solved. And it worked because it did solve the double spending problem. So with, with having uh, the DNA of it block, each block uh, in the previous one, it makes it so difficult to copy because you cannot copy exactly the, 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 you cannot recreate a blockchain that already exists because that particular DNA already exists. So you will create the next one that contains the DNA of all the previous one. So that's pretty much in very simplistic terms what the DNA is about. And if you feel like you need to know a little bit more, you wanna dig a little bit deeper uh, about what the, 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 uh, the blockchain is, well, it's okay. Google and YouTube are just full of, you know, information and video and audio uh, and some courses, even from from um, uh, uh, universities as renowned as uh, uh, the MIT in the U.S. So feel free to do so. I encourage it. And if you have you find some additional information, share it with me as well. Now, now that we understand what the blockchain is and the technology that it brings with it. We'll now talk about the tokenization. 
not sure if tokenization is with a Z or an S, but you get my point, tokenization. So what is tokenization? It is important that you understand that, you know, we'll, and we'll take um, a real estate example to illustrate exactly uh, our explanation of the tokenization. Imagine this. Imagine you want to invest in a real estate project. In the current paradigm, meaning in the current state of the financial system, if you want to invest in a building, in a condo building, right, with apartments, it means you have to buy an entire apartment. You cannot buy half of it. You cannot buy a bedroom. You cannot buy just a piece of the living room. You have to buy an entire apartment or you can't. That is the current paradigm. The second thing is you will need a hefty down payment unless you are in some kind of very, very far uh, place where real estate costs nothing. And even there, you will still need to bring a down payment. Then you need to have a bank account and a good credit record. Because if you don't have a good credit record, no bank is going to, um, no bank is going to give you uh, a loan, a mortgage loan, so that you could actually, you know, pay for that investment or for that apartment. So you have to have a really good credit record. You need a job and not just any job. You need a job. And if you think, oh, I'm self-employed, I make a lot of money, oh, they don't like that. The current paradigm don't, doesn't like that. You know, so that would be a bad idea. That would be a bad idea. Nothing wrong from your side, just the system that we live in. The system we live in. So, so much paperwork will be required that you will need to hire a lawyer and they recommend it. You will need to hire a lawyer to read them for you and show you all the fine prints that maybe you would be tired reading, right? Too long to read, T-L-T-R too long to read or too fine prints or, you know, and it, it's, it's done on purpose. They would write it in such a fine print and usually it's the copy of the copy of the copy, sometimes 10 times, 10,000 times the copy to the point that even reading it is almost impossible. And that's what you're getting. And you got to read it. Usually you don't get the time to read it. You got to sign. And then when you sign, it's only one problem arises that you know that, oh, you didn't read that? Yeah, it was written right there. So that is the system we are in. Now let's look at the same example in the blockchain paradigm. The building's value will be divided into token. So that means the person or the group of person or the company behind the project would then go to, uh, they would go to a company that is specialized in tokenization. The company will take the project and divide it into tokens. If the project, let's say, is $1 billion, they will divide it in 1 billion tokens. And when they have the 1 billion tokens, they will make it available for purchase on the open market. If I only have $100, I will buy token for $100. If I have $1,000, I will buy tokens worth $1,000. If I have $100,000 or a million, I'll go out there if I believe in the project and buy that. But how do I make the decision to buy into that project, to buy those tokens? Well, the project will come with what we know as white papers. And it will tell you things like, oh, this project is really good. You know, it is near university. Uh, there, you know, the vacancy rate in that area is really low. Um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the cost of living is really good. Um, you know, you'll get this much return on investment and so on. Things and information that will help you make the move 
to decide whether you should buy those tokens or not, or how much you should put into it. You don't need a middleman to do that. It's not 10,000 pages of poorly written information that you can barely see so that you need a, a, a lawyer to read it for you. So you'll be able to read the white paper and decide. So no more middleman required. And the tokens that you buy today, you can resell them tomorrow. You don't need to go back to a company that will tell you, no, uh, you bought it already. We can buy it back for you, but it's going to be like 30% uh, uh, whatever fees, uh, or you can only do this or do that. No. Tokens will be able to be resold on a platform that is made for them. No question asked, no lawyer involved, nobody involved. It goes from peer to peer. And the next person could sell or you could you could even sell some one person could even take just a few of your token while three other people take the rest. This is the power of tokenization. So the buying and selling process is a lot simpler and happens in seconds. So in other words, if you look and if you understand what um, a crowdfunding is about, you'll see that tokenization is actually crowdfunding 2.0. So for those who don't know what 2.0 means, it means at the next level, the next generation, the upgrade of crowdfunding. And let me quickly explain what crowdfunding itself is. Crowdfunding is just like when somebody has a great idea and thinks like this is something that could really work, but they don't have the money to make it happen. They go out there and, and look for people that could put $100, $200, $1,000 and so on so that they could create that project or make it happen. And then when it's up and, you know, and, and working, you can then get, um, you know, uh, a reward or get it for cheap or get a return on investment. So this basically brings in, um, you know, it, it, it basically brings in more um, transparency in the whole process. And it opens it up going, you know, doing it through uh, platforms, the right platform, it opens it up to the entire world. This is amazing. So that is basically the tokenization as explained, uh, you know, at, um, with um, the most simplistic word I can find. I hope you guys understand what I mean. And any project could be tokenized, any project, and they are doing it already. They're doing it already. There are many major companies out there that are specialized in that. I'm not going to name any because I, I would like this video to remain uh, general without pushing or pulling you in one direction. Let's go to the next page. Let's talk now about the DeFi. So now we've looked at the blockchain. We've looked at how the blockchain and the uh, and the tokenization work together because all those information I thought mm -hmm. I told you about in the tokenization are exchanged using the blockchain, the blockchain technology, right? Exchange using the blockchain technology, no middleman required, right? And it's fast and 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 it only abides to the code, right? The computer code that's written in it, that the smart contract is written in it. Let me throw another one. All right, let's talk about the DeFi and see how the DeFi connects with all those blockchain and tokenization. If you talk, if we talk about the DeFi, we cannot talk about the DeFi without first talking about the CeFi. DeFi stands for decentralized finance. Now, the decentralized finance, we'll see on the next page exactly what it brings and what it means. But prior to that, let us talk about the centralized finance, the CFI. The CFI is basically the banking system as we know it today. This is exactly the banking and the financial system as we know it today. It is controlled by government agencies, who in turn are controlled by banks, even though they'll never admit it, but we all know that money controls the world. They print money, they can print money as much as they want. Just look at uh, the different uh, crisis we had 2008 and now with the pandemic and everything, you know, government 
throwing all kind of money to the population. I'm not saying I'm, it's bad or, you know, but the problem that it creates and that governments are not telling everyone is that at one point, there will be so much money in the countries that are doing it to the point that the inflation will just reach a level, an unbearable level. And what is going to happen at that point, the money will lose its value. And when it happens, when the money loses its value, the goods and those who own those goods are going to set the prices that they think matches what they believe the goods is worth. And don't be surprised if at, if at that point you buy um, a loaf of bread for $500 or $1,000. As a matter of fact, we've seen it happen in other countries before. In the former Zaire, which is now the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, when they were still using the Zaire franc, at one point, the inflation got so high that soldiers needed the wheelbarrow to go get their, their pay. That is what, uh, you know, people from those parts of the country uh, used to tell us. We've also seen it in Zimbabwe, where the, 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 uh, the, uh, the infl inflation of the uh, Zimbabwean dollar got so high that you needed bags, big bags to go get your salary. So, and many experts, I'm not an expert, I'm just telling you what I know. Many experts believe that this is exactly what is gonna happen in all those money where the, um, the financial system is based on nothing, where money is printed out of thin air. If you wanna know what happened before, well, the money was always an equivalent to gold. At one point, one president in the US decided that, hey, uh, we are the government and the public has to trust us. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop gold and the money is only gonna get or have the value that we give to that money. And the public will have to trust us. You can do some research to find out more. So I don't wanna you know, pull too, uh, I don't wanna di uh, digress. So in the centralized finance, they decide who can borrow and who cannot. Is that fair? I don't think so. They decide who should have a bank account and who should not based on their own criteria. The cost of borrowing is so expensive, so expensive. And yet when you save your money, when you save, they give you 0.5% annually when you're lucky. When you borrow on your credit card, it's like 19, sometimes 25% that you have to pay annually. Uh, when you borrow, when you get a mortgage loan, by the time you paid it back, you've actually paid double the, the money you borrow. Some, it, it's just crazy. And yet, your hard-earned dollars, your hard-earned money, when you put it in a savings account and you ask them, how much am I going to get from this? They'll tell you, uh, you could get not 10%, not 5%, not 3%. If you're lucky, 0.5% annually. That is the centralized financing system. That is the CFI. Now let's look at the DeFi. DeFi stands for decentralized finance. The services that are offered are exactly the same services that you're, you're getting already from centralized finance. Insurance, mortgage, loans, all of that without the middleman. And guess what? As you may or may not know, the tallest and biggest buildings in the world belong to the financial industry. Why? Because they got all the money. They decide how, you know, who gets it, who doesn't get it. And then they cut so big, uh, you know, uh, fees on this, fees on that, and and of course they wear all the nice suit. And and even when they manage your money poorly, 
they still get millions of dollars in a package when they get let go. So the transactions are controlled by a smart contract on the DeFi. So you don't need to trust anybody. Everybody trusts the code. The code is written and you know a set of instructions are written in the code. And then once those set of instructions are met, the code is executed. As simple as that. You don't need a middleman for that. It's not controlled by a government agency. It, built, it is built on trust and open to anyone around the world. You can't imagine the amount of people in poor country, in, in developing countries, in third world countries, that never had a bank account. And hence, any banking service, they cannot borrow money. Even when they have money, they cannot save it. They cannot keep it there, you know, just for it to be safe. So with the DeFi, it actually brings that it democratized the whole banking system, allowing everyone to get a bank account, everyone to, uh, to get banking services. It is built on trust and the data are available because it's open source, extremely cheap. In order to allow people to exchange like that, they use platforms known as decentralized exchanges, for transaction between members. So this is how this is how the D, the DeFi works. This is how the DeFi works and by doing it this way, by doing it this way, they basically allow people like you could get a loan, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do. If you have, you can put your finances, your money on a DeFi platform, you could get services from that DeFi platform. We start to see a lot of company come up with an ecosystem of decentralized finance product, which means they'll be able to offer, um, to offer insurance, mortgage, loans, and all kinds of services that you already uh, used to in the centralized finance yet it will be more specific, cheap, and, uh, and definitely without the interaction of any middleman that would bring fees that you really don't need. Anyway, so this is the end of this presentation. I hope that without complicating stuff too much, I was able to tell you exactly what uh, the blockchain, the tokenization, and and uh, the DeFi are and how they interconnect together. Uh, if, you want, if you want to know more, if you want to dig deeper, go on YouTube. There's a lot of videos that will explain every one of those terms. Uh, if you want to dig even deeper, there are books, there are courses that you can take. But uh, my goal here was really to keep it very, very simple for everyone to understand because the amount of information and projects that are coming our way is going to be to the point that you need to know exactly what you know the basics are before you could actually uh before you could actually um uh decide to join or not to join i hope you enjoyed this video so if you did please give me a thumb up uh youtube needs to see the likes uh in order to uh, decide whether to push a video off for more people to watch it or not and if you have suggestions, of course, leave us a message and uh, we'll gladly implement what is doable. All right. Thank you very much. Once again, have a good day. Bye-bye.